Hello, everyone. Are you ready to impact a billion people? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to talk about a place that can actually do that, hopefully, with everybody. So I'm Emeline Pat Dahlstrom. I'm the Chief Impact Officer for Singularity University. We were founded seven years ago inside NASA Ames in the heart of Silicon Valley. But actually, the weird thing about it is that we're not a traditional university, and we're not even about the singularity. So Singularity University is, though, is a place where you can actually dream big, look at big, bold ideas, and hopefully put that into action. So we're founded in two major principles. One is that technology is a catalyst for change. And I think that with technology, we can also create an abundant future that we all aspire for. Not this Terminator, like dystopian future that, we're, that movies are always like, uh, showing us today. So, but we're not really just looking at any kind of technology. We're looking at exponential technology. Now, what does that really mean? So one of our co-founders, uh, Ray Kurzweil, he wrote the book, The Singularity is Near, has been looking at the, the, basically the trend of computing for the past 100 years. And what he's found is that computers, the price performance of computers has been doubling every 18 months. So this is Moore's law. And it's very deterministic, and it maps out basically beautifully to an exponential curve. So why is that important? If you're actually looking and, and trying to predict the future, if you're looking linearly, then you've missed the boat. So any technology that is digitized or is data-based is also going to be developing exponentially. So which means that AI, robotics, nanotechnology, biotechnology, those are all going to be developing at a very exponential pace. And we need to keep up with it. So why is this important? Because exponential technologies are also deceptive. If you look at that exponential curve, the linear line and the exponential curve at the very beginning is very similar. So you wouldn't know that a technology is actually developing exponentially until you hit that inflection point. And when you hit that inflection point, then it's disruptive. So give, a, give an example. Remember Kodak? I think most of you are millennials here, so you probably were not using like film photography. But back in 1996, Kodak had a market that cap of basically 28 billion with 140,000 employees. By 2012, it has filed for bankruptcy. The same year, there's this unknown company called Instagram who was bought by Facebook for $1 billion, and the employees are 13 people. So we call this the new Kodak moment. And why is that? Because it's, it's, it's actually interesting that Kodak invented digital photography technology but they weren't really looking exponentially. They think that digital will never catch up with film. So there's a lot of industries today that have actually been disrupted by all of these platforms, from Amazon disrupting bookstores to libraries being disrupted by Google. The list goes on and on and on. So one thing that uh, exponential technologies also uh, does is that it also dematerializes products and services. So here's an example for you to see. Sound?
So you get the idea. It's basically been dematerialized. A lot of things are now on our phones. It's also been demonetized. So in the, in the past, we have to pay for long distance service. We have to pay for our, our actual re remote sensing maps. We have to go and uh, watch movies and, and pay for them. Today, we have Skype and the Hangout. We have GPS on our phones. And you can actually watch YouTube uh, videos and Vimeo videos all, all the time that you want. But I think the most important thing that exponential technologies have done to products and services is, is democratized it. So today, we got two guys in a garage that are actually competing with the big companies uh, today on technology. And we've got like hacker spaces and tech shops wherein there's a shared economy of like actually helping each other and using each other's technology and equipment to actually um, work on, on big things in the world. So the world today is actually changing. We are in an exponential world, even if we don't, uh, we don't foresee it today. And for us at Singularity University, it's really great that we're right smack in Silicon Valley. All of the coolest and greatest tech all, uh, gets birthed every day, uh, every day where we are. But the rest of the world is actually not there yet. So today, there are 3 billion people who are still living below $2.5 a day. There's more than a billion people that are, do not have clean water access. There's also people from 700 million people who actually don't read and write. And we are plagued with global problems in terms of climate change. So I think, at least for me, I think it's our moral responsibility not to leave everybody behind. So why not use this disrupt, disrupt, disruptive technology for the good? And that's what actually SU is doing. So our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower leaders to address and apply those exponential technologies to solve humanity's grand problems. And why are we doing this? Since we're actually, we're not a nonprofit, we're a for-profit company, but we're a benefit corporation, because I think that there is a paradigm shift that is happening today. In terms of success for businesses, it's no longer, the measure of success is no longer about revenue only, but the rate at which you actually try to solve these global problems. But we can't really do it alone. We want to bring all of the stakeholders around the world to actually do it with us. And so what we're doing is we're gathering not just entrepreneurs, we're not just gathering corporates, we're not just gathering universities or governments, but everybody all together to actually solve local problems that could also be uh, spinned off to global solutions. And the long-term vision of SU is to create this global community that can actually work together, are interconnected by a digital platform, and work together to make a better place. So today, we create impact by education, community, and innovation. And our flagship program is what we call the Graduate Studies Program. That's where Henrietta actually went to last couple of years back. This program is where we bring together about 80 students from 45 different countries, and they would work in a group to actually work on projects and ideas that would impact a billion people in 10 years leveraging technology. And some of those uh, team projects actually go on and, and go into our SU labs. This is where we do innovation. This is our sandbox. So at SU Labs, we have startup companies, about 30 to 35 of them, working on global uh, problems. They're joined together by our corporate members. These are Fortune 500 companies that would like to innovate. And then also, they are joined by development organizations like UNICEF, Ashoka, Muhammad Yunus's Social Business, because these are actual organizations that have boots on the ground. The problem with Silicon Valley is that we always think that we have the solution, but we actually do not know what the problem is. 
And so for us, having the development organizations and NGOs partnering with us who are on the ground, who know what the problems are, is a good partnership between us. So some of the examples of the uh, startup companies that are actually uh, being birthed within Singularity University, we have Modern Meadow is actually working on uh, creating leather from the lab. And their long-term vision is to create um, meat, basically, uh, in the lab. And so what does that mean? We won't be slaughtering animals in the future. We have a company who made in space who, act, who had sent the first 3D printer to the International Space Center a few months ago. Uh, and they have manufactured basically the first, uh, the first thing manufactured in space. We have companies that have actually birthed the first retail robot in the US. We also have Matternet that has been now commissioned by the Swiss Postal Service to use drones to deliver mail in Switzerland. We have companies like Get Around that was actually the, the first like, platform for shared uh, car sharing uh, in the US. And then we also have Miraculous that has found a, a different kind of testing for cancer, different cancer using a drop of blood. So these are just examples of some of the startups that, um, that are working in our SU labs. In terms of corporates, we actually asked them to join us in putting out challenges. So Lowe's Home Improvement is one of those corporations that have actually done a clean water challenge with us and is still going today. And just recently, we partnered with the Lieutenant Governor of California. As Henrietta was talking about, California now has a really bad problem with water. So we, we, uh, we created a water impact challenge where the biggest ideas and innovation could be incubated at SU to work on solving that problem. So around the world, we're also trying to grow our community. So we're about 10,000 participants strong today with, uh, with presence in 98 countries as well. And we host, about, we host summits, conferences, salons. And at the same time, we also do global impact competitions. So global impact competitions, the focus of this is to have a challenge that would leverage technology to solve a local problem that could scale. So maybe to give you a better understanding, here's a video. The purpose of the Global Impact Competition is, is to create a Silicon Valley culture and reality in every country. Everywhere I go in the world, people tell me, oh, our neighborhood is the Silicon Valley of France. We're the Silicon Valley of Israel. What is Silicon Valley? It's a metaphor for the ability of individuals and small groups to transform major industries and major ideas to make the world a better place. Hi, my name is Susan Graham. I'm from Sydney, Australia. I'm Søren Thurkelsen from Denmark. My name is Cosima. I'm from England. I am Leo Valente. I'm from Argentina. And the GIC project I was working on is planting a billion trees to reforest areas where currently we're using linear techniques had the idea of um, making a collaborative tool where people that know how to do CPR could come to rescue if someone in the near perimeter has a heart attack. My project used patented image processing technology to monitor the healing and progression of chronic wounds. In my project, it's a platform that enables small businesses in developing countries to accept payments with the so-called social cards. As a GIC sponsor, you are not just enabling one person to participate in the Graduate Studies program, but you will catalyze a community of entrepreneurs and assemble talent that can address solutions to your regional needs, creating impact and social benefits. In Denmark, we had to impact 10% of the population. Even though it's a small population, Denmark is a small country, we had to come up with a solution that would impact them uh, already within five years. So it had to be very concrete, very practical. Social entrepreneurship is something I've become quite passionate about. And the GIC embodies this. If you want to be a GIC sponsor, a contestant. So that maybe g gave you a little bit of an understanding of what our global impact competitions are. Last year, we debuted the very first GIC here in Finland. 
And as you can see, Annie Lorelia actually came to the GSP uh, program this summer because she won with a project to water, uh, water quality index in China. So for next year, we're planning to have another global impact competition in Finland. So stay tuned. We're going to be sending out information. And if you'd like to be part of this uh, challenge, please let us know. And so I'm going to end here with a quote and a challenge. So the best way to predict the future is to create it yourself. So if you really want to change the world, be part of the solution. Join us, and let's make a, the world a better place. Thank you.